Today we're going to play with rubber bands because they are my favorite on the gel plate. Welcome back, friends. So I um, have a special project that I'm working on for my patrons over on Patreon. It's a collage, and I needed some different kinds of papers. I had created some subtle blue papers a couple weeks ago with a, like a pale teal color and some white, and that was for part of that project. And now I need other papers that are much darker. So I thought I would do something with rubber bands and it went a little unexpected. So let's take a look. Okay, today we're going to do some more rubber bands and I have this um, rice paper that I want to use. It's from, it's a Japanese rice paper and it's actually made for inkjet printers but I found it works really good on the gel plate. Okay, I'm using some rubber bands. Um, some, I, some are brand new and some are um, I've already used in a previous video. I, I reuse the rubber bands. I do not clean them. That was a question recently. Okay, so I'm using my 8x10 today. And I have a project coming up that I'm doing for my patrons on Patreon and um, a collage. And so a lot of what I'm going to be doing today is with that in mind. And so I'm starting out with some texture. And I'm sorry, but this texture plate is not available for sale anywhere. I've, I've looked. But anyway, it's one of my favorite textures. Hopefully I can find something similar to it at some point, share that with you. And I'm trying to just do some additional texture over that and so what I'm really looking to do this is now um, quinacridone red so we have alizarin crimson was the first layer and now we're doing a lighter color that's similar as you can see on the brayer sheet the two different colors um, and that way maybe just that uh, quinacridone red peeks through those um, textures and I'm waiting two minutes for this paper to dry on the plate so I discovered that at least for this paper anyway uh, two minutes is like the magic number okay so as you could see this paper isn't perfect I mean even Art Advantage was not perfect I mean I, I, I had mistakes like this happen all the time but anyway I decide I'm going to put another layer of quinacridone red over that to sort of cover up some of those blemishes. So we're just gonna line, line it up the best we can and see if we can overlay that. It's probably gonna destroy my texture a little bit. And so again, I'm waiting like two minutes. So if sometimes you get white spots on your print and you really don't like that, just put another layer of paint on top, like a, a really transparent paint. So anyway, that worked a little bit, not as, not as great as I wanted it to, but anyway, um, I didn't even show you what that, what that looked like. So I think it's because I'm preparing another layer. So now here's where our rubber bands come in. And I'm just ra being very random about where I'm placing the rubber bands. And these are going to kind of act like a mask, and I'm going to go right over that sheet that I just created. And this paper is still thin enough that it allows me to get in and around the rubber bands. If the paper was too much of a, like too thick, like a cardstock, you wouldn't be able to do this. So you have to use a rice paper, a wet strength tissue, deli paper, something like that. So as you could see, we now have, I picked up very, very quickly, our texture is showing through. 
So now we, ha we have what I thought my first reaction was, oh, that's a hot mess. But then I thought, how interesting is that? Let me pick that up with some deli paper. <laughs> it was still, I think I put down too much paint. And I thought, wow, that's going to be really interesting. This was unexpected. This happens all the time. You know, you make a mistake, you use too much paint and something happens. Or you don't use enough paint and something interesting happens. The trick is to remember all of these things that happen and use them again in your next session or in future session. But I really love how this looked. And I picked it up with the deli because I knew it was going to mostly pick up. I wasn't so sure it was going to pick up that nicely on the rice paper. So now I'm trying to even like clean my plate a little bit more. And that's also, that could be used for something, I'm sure. Okay, so that's, that's the print that I just made. Now I'm, I'm thinking maybe I, I should try to do that again. So to, to match it exactly, I'm using that same rice paper, but I think I rolled it a lot thinner this time. So I'm not so sure that I'm going to get the same results. And I'm not. But I got an interesting print. So now we're going to have to wait for this to dry because we're going to we're going to pick this up. Oh no, I decide I'm just going to pick it up with a deli sheet. Normally I would have let that dry and um, and then I would have picked it up with another color. But actually that's quite interesting, especially since I already had some paint on the other one. But I've got to try to figure out how I did that. Like I said, I think I just put too much paint. So I'm trying that now. Too much paint. And I'm going to pick it up quicker this time. That worked. This might work really well. Uh, I'm thinking about this just now um, with, uh, you know, Golden's Open because I probably would have gotten multiple pr prints out of it. So I'm going to try that one of these days. I'm not so sure I have some paints gray around, but I, I would try it with black. But I think it would be beautiful. Um, definitely going to try that soon. Uh, the only bad thing about the open acrylics is you, you can't, you know, stack them. You have to wait for them to dry. Like my paint dries so fast that I just like pile the papers one on top of the other and I don't have a lot of space here. So I don't. You know, it might, that one was quite wet, so I probably let that one dry a little bit first. But um, I noticed with the open acrylic, I really have to be careful because they stick together. Okay, so this is a manganese blue, golden fluid. It's very transparent, as you can see. So I'm going to use this on the underside of those deli papers that I made. Because the one thing I didn't like about, for, for the project that I'm working on, I didn't want to see too much transparency. Because I'm going to be mounting it on a white board. 
That is, that looks beautiful. Okay, so now that is uh, quinacridone red. I'm just doing a sloppy application <laughs> and I'm going to lay that down on top of that. I mean, over that, but still on the underside. And that's going to give me some purple hues. So since I made two of those deli papers, I'm going to I'm going to make another one and this time I'm going to intentionally make some purple, a little bit of purple with some blue pe peeking through. I'm not mixing it well. That's intentional. If I really wanted to mix it, I would um, swirl it around with the... Anyway, so I, I used... Th that was another one of my pickup sheets that I liked a lot. So I'm putting this on the underside of my deli papers that I've already made. So for the underside of the next deli paper, I'm doing something a little different. This is quinacridone red and I did my texture and I'm going to wait for it to dry. And once it's dry, then I will put another color and then I'll pick up with the deli sheet. So this is again the manganese blue. So I thought I would see more of the texture, but it turns out I didn't really, a lot of the texture did not come through. But we don't know these things until we experiment. So I laid down some more cerulean blue. That one was not quite as successful as the other one, but I love some of the grunge that's on this plate, especially across the top where we've got these like arc shapes. So I'm just gonna pick this up with some yellow green. Sometimes things happen on the plate and I just, I want to save them and, you know, it has nothing to do with the session that I'm currently doing, but I have to clean the plate anyway. So, um, let's, let's just do it. I also love the brayer sheet. I love how that, you know, the mixture of the red and the blue made a sort of deep, almost brownish purple, especially with the green. But look at how you know beautifully subtle those colors are. If you could call yellow green subtle. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna let that dry for two minutes. I might I might have let it dry a little bit longer because it cleaned the plate really well, but look at all that like gorgeousness. So I will definitely use that for something. Okay, so now we're, we're going back to our cerulean blue. So this, this paint blooms a lot, so you have to make sure that you, you use enough of it. I, I find that I have to use a little bit more than I normally do. So I'm going back to my rubber bands. I really like the ones that are tightly wound. I don't even, that kind of happened by accident. And this is a really, really thin rice paper that I have. This is a different rice paper than the one I was using earlier. And so we have some nice, it, it left some nice positive images of the um, rubber bands. 
So I'm going to have to let that paint dry. I love that brighter sheet. So seeing that yellow green with that blue inspired me to pick this up with the yellow green. And this yellow green is from Nova Color. Amsterdam makes a similar color. I know Nova, Nova Color, you have to order from them directly and you have to wait to get it. So if you're really anxious, Amsterdam is um, a good solution for this color. So again, I'm going to wait my two minutes and really let this pick up. So it looked like it was going to tear on that end, so I moved to the other side. Okay. What's that? Okay, print. I'm going back to my Payne's Gray. Oh, I decided to go and put a mask over that. So I guess it really wasn't uh, exciting me that much. I love to use rubber bands as a mask because it really makes some crazy unexpected shapes. And I don't know why I'm doing this. This is like stupid. But anyway. <laughs> I decided I wanted to pick that up too, and I really made a mess, but I think I ended up loving that paper, if I recall. So see how I said it was stupid? Sometimes it's so stupid things that really come out, like I said, unexpected. That is the word for gel printing. Now my brayer still had some Payne's Gray on it, so it kind of muddied up that green, but it just made it a little prettier. Sometimes that green can be a little too intense, and that made it really nice. Okay, so now I'm going to work on um, salvaging some of these other prints. So the, the one that I was just holding in front of the camera has a little too much background white paper. So I'm going to lay down some yellow, uh, yellow green over it. And now I have all this left because I didn't, as you see, I picked, I laid it down and picked it right up. So I'm going to, this is that messy one that I just made that I said was horrible. Now look at what happens. It ends up being one of my favorites. Absolutely love it. The delicate bright green lines and then the muted tone on top. It, it was perfect. Okay, so I'm starting with Payne's Gray again. And this is a much thinner coat. And I'm going over that other one as a mask. So this was the one that started out uh, with, I think, a cerulean blue or manganese blue, yellow green on top of that, and now a third layer as a mask. Rubber bands as a mask. So that left me with an interesting ghost. And so I'm going to have to wait for this to dry and then we can pick it up with another color. So that took a just a little bit to dry. And I'm thinking the yellow green again. So you really have to wait for this to completely dry because if you don't, your colors are all gonna smear. Anyway, here's the yellow green.
And now I'm going to wait for this to dry for two minutes. So the darks around the uh, around the rubber bands are really heavy, a little heavier than my my usual prints, but it's very interesting. So I'm I'm really happy with this one. Okay, so now that we're back to cerulean blue. We're going to go over this with a, uh, like using the rubber bands as a mask. As you can see, the rubber bands stick to the paper. So that added a lot more interest. And now we have this ghost again. We have to keep dealing with the ghost. We don't want to throw away the ghost. So for this one, I'm going to forget about making papers for my project and I'm going to go for a more colorful uh, result here. I just want to play a little bit. So that was quinacridone red on the right hand side and the left is Indian yellow. Plus we have that cerulean blue, that, no manganese blue, excuse me. and. Uh, So I'm going to pick up a little bit of this, even though we already had an impression of the rubber bands. So now we have a double impression. Okay, so I'm going to wait for this to dry, and then we're going to pick it up with just titanium white. I think I want to preserve all these bright colors. Okay, so it's dry now. And I'm going to lay down some white. It's titanium white. This is also Nova Color. Any titanium white will do. It did mix a little bit with the color, which it, it's going to happen sometimes. It seemed dry to the touch, but sometimes the paint reactivates. I don't know why it does sometimes and not other times. It might have to do with the humidity in the room. Maybe the paint appears dry on the surface, but underneath is maybe still a little bit wet. I don't know, but it does happen. And sometimes we got very nice results because of it. So we're gonna let this dry for two minutes. Oh yeah. So the, the blue went green and we got a little bit of Indian yellow in there. We've got beautiful reds and oranges. So I'm very happy with that. And our white did, did smear a bit and actually made it more interesting. So I love it. Okay, so during this session I made a bunch. And a couple of them were for a specific project. So I needed some very dark uh, papers that I'm going to then lay on uh, more colorful things on top of. So I wanted to, I wanted a really dark, you know, like Payne's Gray, but I want I don't want the whole thing to be Payne's Gray. So I kind of like the um, I think this was manganese blue peeking through, and on this one I think I have a combination of quinacridone red and the Payne's Gray. And this one's a little bit more subtle, and I think when I mix the two of these together, that it's going to be beautiful. I might, I might even incorporate a little bit of this green, or at least in these areas where just a little bit of the green is peeking through. So these are the winners. I did not want them to be on deli paper. I wanted it to be on thin rice paper, but. I was not getting the results that I wanted. So I'm perfectly happy with um, collaging with the deli paper. Now, this was a total accident. I can't even remember how many layers is on here. I think it's four. This one also 
absolutely gorgeous. I'm very happy with this. Um, I, again, don't remember all my orders. Now, this was Payne's Gray. It looks like I was using black paint because of the layers, you know, of the warmer colors on top kind of made it black. And this was just, I was, again, using that very, very thin paper just to do the pickup to leave me this um, sort of yellowish reddish ghost that went on top of I can, again cannot remember the order of things but then I picked up with white that I know for sure but I think I had this um, blue um, left over from the rubber bands uh, again I don't remember but this is also a very this is like my favorite color palette this is like you know all my colors here in this project that I'm going to be working on this collage there are many areas many different shades some some places where it kind of went purple where we went green um, where we have this beautiful Indian yellow so I have a lot of pieces here that I can use. I need smaller pieces for that uh, project. Okay, so thank you for those of you who stayed to the end. Um, I said I was going to like start sharing some of my process on these larger works that I do in hopes that I can actually get more of that kind of work done. The YouTube channel is a lot of fun not has been it is a lot of fun I really enjoy doing those videos but but what ends up happening is it's taking me away from my my work my my large paintings um, I don't get to do that that often because there's no time left um, I am still working my day job so um, as a web designer I do have my own web design business, so my time is kind of my own, but I, um, I'm still very busy at times. I'm hoping that soon I will be able to stop doing that. But until this becomes a little more profitable, I'm still gonna do that. So that leaves me only, you know, a couple days a week. And these paintings take a long time. <laughs> anyway, you may recognize this from way back like I think I started it almost two years ago and I still I just kind of put it aside it was it was like in the corner somewhere where I would forget about it and a couple of weeks ago I pulled it out and I started working again I am very worried about this area so just to give you a little bit of background these are fabric mosaic paintings so the entire uh, skin part of the of the artwork um, her neck her hands her arms are all fabric mosaic and they have positive thoughts in them so this is the I, I ordered this fabric from Spoonflower if you're not familiar with Spoonflower you got to check it out spoonflower.com I do Photoshop document in six or seven shades of gray anywhere from a really pale white with gray type all the way to black with gray type so it's really black I do it piece by piece I cut it with one of these it's a painstaking process I'll, I'll show you a little bit here but anyway it's um, kind of like a puzzle you know I map out the skin in different tonal ranges and I number them from one to six or one to seven, depending. In this particular case, I did have seven, seven shades, but usually I try to keep it at six. A lot of times, like see this part here that's really bothering me because you can't see that it's one hand on top of the other. I, it'll probably be fine when I'm done. <laughs> um, this whole hair area here, once it has fabric in it, I think it'll all be fine in my experience I've been doing these kind of paintings for about about 10 years I think I always worry always 
I always think it's not going to work out. And, uh, and then it always does. So sometimes better than others. And hands are hard, but I have a lot of experience with hands. And, but I never did fingers on top of fingers before. So this is, this is a, a bigger challenge. But anyway, um, I had also originally painted the word believe down here and then messed it up. So um, I have to repaint all of that and I will probably be doing that in the next couple, one of the next couple of weeks. But I really want to tackle um, this part of the finger. I, I, actually her neck, her neck is really bothering me. I want to get the neck finished this week that way next week I can work some more on the fingers. So as you can see, I've, I think I'm making pretty good progress on her chin and neck. Uh, I still have a lot more to do. It's, uh, I always think I can do more in the time that I've allowed than I actually can because the pieces are so tiny. Because it, without the tiny pieces, we do not get the details. So. Um, yes, I could make this a lot simpler and the pieces could be bigger, but the detail will not be there. Okay, so I'm starting to see the definition in her chin. So that makes me happy. This is the lightest area here. It's like a highlight on her chin. And as we, as I fill in these darks, uh, you know, the chin is really starting to pop out. Now the same thing with the fingers, like today I just kind of went across just to sort of try to get that definition of the under under the fingers the fingers under the fingers so i'm i'm hoping maybe next week if i tackle this area right here then uh, maybe it'll all start to you know start to pop but i i have to be really careful with the lights because none of the lights are really light enough I still have to do fingernails and things like that. And I'm a little worried. I might have to do like a wash over the lightest color that I have because I'm not sure it's light enough. But anyway, this is uh, kind of what's happening. Also, I don't know if you see this, but this is rice paper layered on top of rice paper with a blue underneath. So I wanted to sort of knock back the blue a bit and just get more of the feel of fabric. And I love how it's like it's pieced together. It's, it's really, I've never done this before and it's working out well. So anyway, till next time, thank you for watching. So don't forget to create, inspire and share. I hope you enjoyed this video from start to finish and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.